so tell me a little bit about you said that one one of the things that was really on your heart recently was the the challenges that executive women have in the workplace and i ask you to extrapolate that a little bit more to even other high achieving women but let's start with executive women talk to me a little bit about what are those challenges and and specific to adhd that we might encounter so I've had several clients who, like you said, are high achieving women, and they may have just recently found about their ADHD diagnosis, or they had it as a child. And then uh, when they entered into the workplace, it changed for them in a way. There are certain things that uh, became a challenge that maybe weren't a challenge before they entered the workplace. Hmm. And for, for many women, from what I've heard from my own clients, from what we've seen in research, the workplace is not always very friendly to us yeah. add neurodiversity on top of that it can make it even more challenging so i've been speaking to other high achieving women and one of the common things i hear so often is how they can be really hard on themselves mm -hmm. they're already trying to be perfect and as we know for many of us adhders perfectionism <laughs> is something that can be quite a challenge for us the perfectionism the procrastination the paralysis i call that the 3p uh, and recently the 3p loop uh, oh. i was talking to some other clients and i was trying to come up with a better name and someone said what about 3p loop i'm like you know what i like that because it can be that catch-22 it can be that circular loop where if we can't be perfect at something then we may start procrastinating even trying a part of it and then time goes by it gets even worse and then we feel paralyzed oh wow that's, right that 3p loop yeah that's and that's so prevalent um, among so many of us i'm sure that even people who are not high achieving can can identify with that whether we have some project due or something going on in our personal lives so say more about how difficult it is for adhd women I mean, well first of all let's just acknowledge as you just did that women in the workplace have a sometimes have a rougher time depending on who they work for with how big the company is et cetera, et cetera how much support they get from hr et cetera et cetera and as you mentioned when you add adhd and and it's it's ilk because most of us don't just have adhd there's lots of other things that hang on with it um when you when we add that on there my guess is that a lot of high achieving women are doing a lot of the Oh, I got to hold my breath and I got to do this just right because someone may may notice kind of thing with ADHD. We have that in spades. We have that already going on for ourselves. So you mentioned when ADHD women were younger, they uh, these women were younger. They might have been able to sail through and not maybe not even know about their ADHD. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because how could this hide? <laughs> I know, right? How is it possible? And <laughs> It seems that for, for some of them, it's because they had certain structures and supports in place ah. that helped them. So mm -hmm. whether they were kids or maybe they were in certain roles, they would have certain structures and supports. So perhaps as kids, they had their parents and their teachers to keep them on task. Ah. Uh, maybe they had friends where they all had similar goals, so they were able to work together to get things done. So it didn't feel as daunting. And then suddenly they're in a workplace or perhaps a new workplace and either the structure and support isn't there or it's different. So if you have someone who perhaps in one workplace was able to have an administrative assistant mm -hmm. to help them organize their day, organize their calendar, make sure that all of their files are ready for that meeting, getting uh, them the notifications to get to those meetings on time, then that's great. And then perhaps they moved into a different position and they no longer have that support. Yeah. And because they're so high achieving, they think to themselves, well, I should be able to do this. Like, you know, it, it, I, I should be able to like, you know, take care of my calendar. I see other people doing it, so I should as well. And now suddenly they're getting so bogged down in these other tasks that they didn't have to do before that their other work is suffering. Exactly. So it could really depend on the structure and support that they have in place. And if that changes, that can lead to challenges. Well, it probably could also lead to diagnosis. 
when you when you pull those things away suddenly i mean i talk a lot about menopause and that's when i was diagnosed and it was almost like my estrogen was my support <laughs> and you pull that away or diminish it greatly and suddenly it it pulls back the covers on adhd so i i can imagine that a lot of executive women or high achieving women are surprised to know to find out that they have adhd and maybe they might even be a little bit ashamed of it they it, it certainly answers some questions there's no question i think that that was true for most of us but it also might bring some level of oh my gosh there's something wrong and I now maybe I even have to try even harder to cover that up to hide it from other people. Let's talk about masking for ADHD women with high achievements. Yes. And I think I experienced that myself because, as you said, you know, I trained as a health executive yeah. and, you know, I was in several leadership positions, but I didn't get diagnosed until I was an adult. Wow. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, it makes sense on one hand when I got to know more about ADHD. But I thought, how was I missed? And, you know, how did this happen? And then when I learned about masking, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that really made so much sense to me because I didn't realize how much I was masking, where I was having to put on a different face no matter how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. So because especially as a woman and a woman of color mm -hmm. and a visible religious minority, I had a lot of pressures in the workplace because rarely anyone looked like me in the workplace. Yeah. 